哈喽，大家好，这次感染天老师。那二零二四年上海乐展已经顺利落幕了，不知道大家有否参加呢？那大家又对这次乐展感受如何呢？那我参加这次乐展以后呢，感受是这次真的来了很多来自全球的非常厉害这家大师啊，能这么近距离的看他们表演，真的是一种非常让人激动和兴奋的事情。那这次来的所有这家大师里边，论咖位，我相信 Marty Friedman 一定是其中最引人注目的一位。我相信弹吉他的朋友一定对 Marty 非常熟悉了，作为传奇金属乐队。Mega Death 的曾经吉他手，后来呢长期居住日本，开始自己的一些独立的音乐道路啊。那马蒂一直是很多人心中的吉他英雄。那我这次非常荣幸受到了 Fender 的邀请，获得一次和马蒂近距离聊天专访的机会。我问了一些我本人非常感兴趣的话题，和马蒂聊了很多他关于吉他、关于音乐的看法。那其中呢不乏很多让我获益匪浅的内容啊。那本期视频就是我把这次专访的内容分享给大家，希望大家喜欢。Marty, really nice to meet you, and really an honor to see you here in China and with Fender today. I'm a longtime fan of your music. Back in the day, you were in the, the band Major Death, then you moved to Japan to do your solo works. We all know that you have been living in Japan、um, for a long time、so、as an American. So, what's the aspect of East Asian culture attract you the most? Interesting question. When you say Asian culture, there are so many different、yeah. Asian cultures. And that's very attractive to me.、Uh, I first went to Japan because I loved Japanese pop music and rock music and Japanese music. But at the same time, I also was kind of familiar with Chinese music and Chinese traditional music and Chinese pop music, which is very different from J-pop. Yes, very different. And so, living in Japan and working in Japan, based in Japan, it gave me many more opportunities to come to China. To do different projects, different works, and、um, it's always very thrilling to me to enjoy the differences between Japan and China. What do you think is the biggest difference between Japan and China? The biggest、uh, musical difference between Japan and China、mm -hmm. is, to me, that the Japanese music, especially current pop music, has a lot of. Information and data in it. It's very busy. It's very complex. Yes. It's very. There's a lot going on in a short period of time. It's like if you're talking about data, you're talking about one terabyte in one song. Yeah. But in Chinese music, it's a little bit more open, and there's more space.、Mm. And I find that in Chinese pop music, the melodies are based on more of a Chinese melodic. Melodic taste, yes, and Japanese music is based on a Japanese melodic taste. Because I, I think Japanese like language has more alphabet, more words in the, the in the sentence. Maybe that changed that the way be, that could be. They write different melody. Yeah, yeah, that, that could be very much. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, are there any Chinese band or musicians or guitarists that you particularly like? I am the biggest J. Chow fan in the world.、Okay. If J. Chow. Sees this, please call me. <laughs>、um, um, I love Jay Chow's music. I heard it one time in the radio, and asked the person driving, "Who's that on the radio?" Is this Jay Chow? Said, "Take me straight to the music store. I need to buy this."、Mm -hmm. So I bought a whole bunch of Jay Chow CDs. And biggest fan. And then I was able to play with Ame. Oh yeah, touring, and I'm a huge fan of hers. And Dai Eileen. I don't know if you know who that is.、Yeah. Um, actually, these are kind of a couple years ago. I'm not really too sure who the current Chinese singers are. Okay,、um, but I just love the ballads. The ballads. I remember talking to Ame a lot about this, and、mm -hmm. when I was in the band, she wanted to do a lot of hard rock and heavy metal type of songs,、mm -hmm. and I said, "I love your ballads too." She says, "Well, you have to do ballads in China.、Mm -hmm. China ballads is." It's the most important thing to do, but like sometimes I want to rock out too. Yeah, you know that's why I called you to join my band. Yeah, and、uh, I love it both. So I think the Chinese ballads are are something that appeals to me very much. And if you listen to my music, sometimes I steal melodies from Chinese ballads. Okay, yeah, I can tell because one of your recent work you put out I like the most is the song you did for Japanese heritage. Yes, that one is really melodic. Thank、I、you、like、very much. Do you know that when I made that song, there were people in my staff that says this song sounds very Chinese. A <laughs> little bit. <laughs> this part here. This. How do you get this guitar out here? This part here, like um, it goes. Oh yeah, like the. 
major Pentonic stuff. Yeah, it sounds very Chinese. That's, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, but I think sometimes for the traditional Chinese and Japanese music, they share some of the similarity. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yes, they do. And and um, it's funny. It's Of course, it's much more deeper than like just a pentatonic scale. Of course. But it's kind of funny that Japanese music, Chinese music, and Okinawan music ah. can sort of be defined by a pentatonic scale to simplify things. So, for example... First, you have to be in tune. <laughs> so say, China, you might say. That mm. might make you think of China, right? Yes. But if you want to think the same thing in Japan. Mm. Right? So it's still pentatonic, but different, still pentatonic. different intervals. But if you want to say Okinawa, you could go. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. It's very interesting. That's very simplified, you know, because yeah. when you, of course, when you listen to Chinese music, it's not just a pentatonic scale. Of course. But like with this little example of three different five note mm -hmm. pentatonic mm -hmm. scales, you can sort of hear the country yeah. in there. I think that's fascinating. Yeah. So we just talked about something about the guitar and the music. And my next question is, so many young guitar player nowadays focus only on practicing maybe certain techniques or following tabs only for complex songs. So this results in many people focus too much on techniques but possibly lacking emotional expression and creativities. So what's your thoughts on that? Well, technique is important. You have to be able to play the instrument. So of course, practice of anything is good. But what I always say is you must create opportunities to play in front of other people. It doesn't matter if you're kind of a beginner, middle, super pro. When you play in front of people, your body says, I must play my best because I don't want to mess up in front of people. Yes. It's a pressure. That pressure makes what you play much more effective. Yeah. If you're by yourself and you make a mistake or play badly, there's no pressure, no one cares, yes. nothing happens. But you're, when you're playing in front of people, your body forces you to work yeah. harder. It's more about a connection, right? More with, connection with and, and your own personal fear of yeah. looking like an idiot. You don't want to look like an idiot. Yes. So when you do that, you get much more effective practice time. Mm. So that means practice in front of your sister, your brother, your family, your friends. Say, look, I'm trying to play this new song now. Listen, mm. that's much better than playing in your room. Yes. So even if you're in a very beginner's band, try to like make little shows, you know, play mm. in the park or play at a small club or restaurant, because then that what you do is going to stick to your body. Yeah, so because learning music is more like learning a language, right? You have to speak and have to communicate with other people. Exactly. Yeah. My next question is, as a guitar player famous of technical playing, but also super melodic and full of emotion, do you have any suggestion for creating guitar-focused music or composing instrumental rock guitar solos? It's, uh, you know, don't force yourself to make instrumental music. Okay. <laughs> you, you know, um... Instrumental music, if you love to make instrumental music, that's great. But to just try to make music that you like, the rules are the same. Mm. You need to, when you listen to what you're playing, you have to decide, do I want to put my name on this? Is this what my name means, this sound? Mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself that all the time. Mm. You know what I mean? So like when you're playing, this is what, when people hear this, it's going to be me. Yes. So you have to decide for yourself what you want to work on that you want to represent you. Yes. So that's the same instrumental, vocal, classical, rock, any kind of music. Yeah, so this leads to my next question. So in your opinion, what is the key for someone to find their own unique guitar tone and sound? Tone, um, my best advice is to get a good instrument. Mm -hmm. But if you're a beginner, you don't deserve a good instrument yet, and you shouldn't waste the money on it. Okay. Get a cheap instrument, 
couple hundred dollars US right. maybe and work until you think, you know what? I need a better instrument and I'm, I'm gonna keep playing. Mm -hmm. And then you get a good guitar and you know what? All instruments, good instruments sound pretty good. Yes. So the more you play, the tone comes out of here. Yes. You can't say you need this instrument, that one, this amp, this effect. The more you play, the tone comes out. So yes. if you have a good quality instrument, it's going to sound good if you're playing good. Yes. No instrument is going to help bad playing. <laughs> yeah, the, the most important part still is, is a, the person behind the instrument yes. and the hand, the, the heart, right? True. And it's just that the more you play, the better it sounds. Yeah, cool. You have already left an incredible mark on the music world. So how do you want to be remembered as a guitarist and a composer? Just uh, like, you know, someone who's uh, made people happy with music, made people feel emotions with music. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're a fan of someone's music, it becomes a part of your life. So if I was a part of someone's life, then I would be very happy with that. Cool. So could you also share more about your future music plans? My future plans is uh, to uh, tour for my album Drama, which came out oh. this year. Um, I'm going to tour America, Australia, South America, and Europe, and hopefully China. Mm. Um, just last night, we are talking about playing in China, so it looks like it could happen. Yeah, people will be looking forward to it. Me too. Yeah. So would you consider collaborating more with Chinese musicians in the future? I would love to. I want to do it. I haven't really done very much of that, mm -hmm. um, and I would love to do it anytime. Yeah. I think that's it for my question. So in the end, could you please say something to the followers of my channel? Skyline Guitar Studio. These were very nice questions, well thought out and well articulated, and I hope I made some okay answers. Please keep following this channel. I'm sure there's a lot of great content on there for everybody, and um, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Glad to All right. speak to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. 以上就是本次访谈的所有内容了。Marty 本人真的非常的 nice。通过讨论一些话题呢，能感受到他发自内心深处的对于音乐的热爱，让我很受触动了。那也希望这次访谈对大家有帮助。最后呢，也再次感谢分的给我这次机会，并且协助我完成了这次的采访。那视频的最后，如果你想看更多关于电台内容的话，不要忘了关注我这次甘天老师。让我们下期节目再见。嘿嘿嘿嘿嘿，喂喂喂喂，喂是摩西摩西呢 ？Yes, you got it. 喂。Your Japanese is so good. <laughs> Even better than English, right? I Japanese. think so now, yeah. <laughs> my, my assistant is half Japanese, half Chinese. She half, said even... Half Japanese, half... Yeah. She said even your And how much are you doing? Uh, just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's a little bit.